Hey there! Welcome to the Sew Along with Ash and Elm. Love Notions Laundry Day Tea Sew Along. Um, this is a really awesome freebie pattern provided um, from Love from Love Notions Patterns. Um, it's got a bunch of different options, a bunch of lengths, um, sleeve lengths. They've got so lengths. They've got tunic, regular top, tunic top, and dress. Sleeve length. They have tank, cap, three fourth and um, full length and full sleeve. And um, they also have a couple of different necklines. You can do a scoop neck or a V-neck. So I'm excited for this. This is a perfect, like, nice swing tee, swing dress kind of pattern. Um, and I've actually never sewed it. I've had it for years and years and years and I've never actually sewn it, even though it's one of my favorite kinds of tops to wear. So I'm really excited to be sewing it along with y'all today. Um, just a heads up, I know usually when we do our sew alongs, we kind of break it up into different pieces, but because this is such a great, easy pattern, I'm just going to do it all in one video, and I think we should still get it done within like half an hour. So hopefully everything goes right. Um, I am going to be doing the cap sleeve option as well as the v-neck option. I'm not a huge v-neck fan, but um, I wanted to do something a little different versus just the, the basic options. Like originally I was like, I'm going to do a tank and scoop neck, but um, those are all pretty simple, basic. And I wanted to kind of challenge myself and challenge us, but you are more than welcome to do the scoop neck or any, any kind of sleeve, anything you want. This is just what I'll be doing for um, so long purposes. So let's get, let's get into it. Um, you're going to want to make sure you have your back fabric and look at how gorgeous this is. I'm super excited for this. This is the Twinkle Tie Dye on um, brush, Double Brush Poly from Ash and Elm and it is gorgeous and I'm super excited. But anyways, you'll need a back, you'll need a front. My front is cut with the v-neck so if you did a scoop neck it won't look quite like this it'll be more scooped also if you are doing a tank your sleeve your shoulder seam your shoulder seam here will be smaller if you're doing a tank you'll need tank bands if you're doing sleeves you'll need mirror images of your sleeves and you'll also need a neck band and that is it so should be super easy and super quick so 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 I like to say so a lot. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's get sewing. Um, I will be using, pardon me, my serger. Um, you can totally do this on a sewing machine. Just make sure that you are using a stretch stitch when you sew. So make sure you're using a um, lightning stitch, zigzag stitch, or your triple stitch, stretch stitch, because it'll help your seams, or it'll help your thread be able to move with your seams as you put it on and off and move around. So that is super important to make sure you're using a stretch stitch. But other than that, pretty, pretty easy basic stuff. So I'm gonna move this camera down so y'all can see my workspace. Hopefully this helps. Here we go. I had to get a new phone because the phone I had um, was out of space. So I got a new one just for y'all. So hopefully it'll stop cutting out on me. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do first is we're gonna take the back of our laundry day tee and place it front, face up in front of us. So right sides up. And then we're gonna be putting the front right sides together on top of our back. So you should have something, the back of the fabric, and then the right sides are touching. And we're just gonna line up these shoulder seams here, and we're gonna sew along the shoulder seams using a three eight inch seam allowance. Same thing 
with our other shoulder seam. We're going to match them up right sides together and then three eight inch seam allowance along those raw edges. When you're making garments it's very important that you know that you have the correct seam allowance. So what I've done with my machine, if you can see it here, is these different color marks here are, um, I don't think you can see the quarter inch one, but those are the marks telling me what my seam allowances are. They're already marked on my machine, but I just made them colorful to make it a little bit more easy for me to see them. But if you're using a regular sewing machine, a lot of them have a measuring thing on there as well. But I always like to just kind of check it every once in a while. Because sometimes my mind goes to one place and I'm wrong. But, all right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our laundry day tee at the shoulder seam here. And we're going to lay it right sides up. And we're going to take our sleeve. This is my twist of here. And in the sleeve pattern, there was a handy dandy notch there for us. We're gonna use a couple clips. We're gonna match that notch or the middle of the sleeve, the sleeve to the seam, the shoulder seam allowance that we had. Then what we're going to do is we're just gonna kind of bring the corner of the sleeve over to the corner of the arm scythe. Scythe. I don't. I still don't know how to say that word. Anyways. Um, and we're just going to kind of line it up here. Feel free to pin or clip along the curve to help you um, just kind of keep that in mind while you're sewing. And then we're going to just do the same thing to the other side. So the back corner of the arm sky, sky whatever, the arm, the armhole. <laughs> we're going to match those corners up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew, starting at the corner, we're gonna go up around the curve, back down to the next corner using three eight inch seam allowance. Make sure when, oh, I lost my pedal. Make sure not to lose your pedal. <laughs> Make sure though when you're sewing that you're not pulling on your garment. The sleeve should have a one-to-one -one ratio so you don't want to pull on it or stretch on it on either the sleeve or the main garment. You just want to let the machine feed it right through. If you pull or stretch it you're going to get waving. So I just kind of like to help guide it around the curves but I don't pull it or anything, I just kind of let the machine do its thing. Same thing now to the other sleeve. We're going to open our top up. We're going to match that notch or the center of the sleeve to the shoulder seam. And then bring the sleeve so that the corner of the sleeve matches the corner of the arm and then the same thing to the front and then just kind of go through make sure your 
curves line up. And if you want, go ahead and pin or clip that. Again, if you're using a regular sewing machine, make sure you're using a stretch stitch. I know I say it a lot, but it's just mostly because I want to kind of remind, remind you. Because I've done times where I thought I was using a stretch stitch, and then I look and I'm like, oh darn it. So it's just always good to kind of check before, before you sew. Because you never know if you accidentally hit a button. And the last thing you want is your gorgeous new laundry day tea falling apart. Okay. Now that we have our sleeves added, our garments to our laundry day tees. We are going to flip it so that right sides are together again and starting at the two corners of the sleeves we're going to match those up. Go ahead and pin it if you'd like. I'll try and be a good example this time. I'm <laughs> not usually. And then I like to make sure my seams of where the arms where the um, sleeves met the, the arms. I like to make sure that those are lined up and then just kind of match it as you go. Make sure the raw edges of the sides are lined up, right sides together, all the way down. And then you can either start, it doesn't really matter if you start at the sleeve your corner of your sleeve here or at the bottom it's it doesn't make a difference whatever you prefer now what we're going to do is we are going to sew I'll show you here let's get it all laid out so here's the bottom of my garment and here's my sleeve we're just going to sew three eight inches all the way around and when we get to the sleeve again we're not going to um, stretch it or anything. What I like to do when I do curves like this is I like to just kind of um, manipulate. So if you can see, here's the a little bit of a sleeve curve here. What I like to do is I just like to manipulate it back a little bit. So instead of a curve, you get more of a straight line, but then it'll go back into a curve as long as you keep that three eight inch seam allowance. So. So three inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna sew those raw edges together, close it up. I still have a curve there but when I sewed it I made sure it was more straight but it still goes back into that curve just so you can see that all right now we're just gonna do the same exact thing to the other side lining up those raw edges three inch seam allowance
So now we can turn our garment right sides out. We actually have something that resembles a shirt. You got a neckline, sleeves, goes all the way to the bottom. I did do the tunic length because um, I prefer longer shirts. But okay, dun dun dun. Now the part that I hate the most. I am not a huge fan of V-necks. I just, I'm kind of a perfectionist and doing V-necks just drives me bonkers. So, um, I'm not super excited about this, but I am excited. I should, um, because if you can get them done correctly, I do like the look of them, but it's just, they take a bit more work than a regular neckline, the scoop neck, but that's okay. All right, sorry, I just had to have to thread my machine real quick. I remember to do the bobbin, but then I stopped there because we are going to want a regular machine for this part of it. It's going to help you get some nice crisp corners on your v-neck. So what we need to do first is we need to take our v-neck line, see if I can lay it out on. Okay. So we're going to take our v-neck line and we're going to do a three inch seam allowance from one side of the corner to the middle and then back up to the next corner. Like I said, I like to kind of remeasure just to make sure I'm on track with what I need to be at. Perfect. Okay. I don't have my regular machine marked because I use this more for applique than I do anything else. So I do a lot of freehand on it. But eight inch sequence. Start right here. Oh, I was looking for my pedal and I'm like, oh yeah, I don't have it. On this one. Okay. We're going to slow it down quite a bit. So we got to the middle. Now I'm just gonna go a little bit more down actually. There we go. Now I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna leave my needle down and pivot it 90 degrees. I think it's 90 degrees. Pivot it so I'm coming back towards me. double brush poly on this machine uh, sometimes does great and sometimes it didn't eat it so this machine is my picky one but I didn't get my V all the way but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clip from that corn that middle corner we're gonna clip to up to the seam allowance but not through it so you're gonna create a clip like that. So it was like this and then we clipped it up to but not through the seam allowance to get it nice. That way, <clears throat> pardon me, when we sew it on we can sew it nice and flat like I was talking about with the um, sleeves. How I like to get those nice and flat. Okay, the next part I'm going to do just because this also requires the sewing machine is we're going to take the front of our laundry day tee and starting I mean wherever you want but I'm gonna go probably about an inch inch and a half up 
We're gonna do three eight inches down again, um, three eight inch seam allowance. We're gonna go down to the center of our V and then back up another inch, inch and a half. And that's gonna stabilize this so that when we go to sew it, it's not gonna wanna stretch too much or move too much. So let's go ahead and get that put in there. and then we're going to just pivot it, leaving the needle down, making sure it's, everything's nice and straight. Pivot 90 degrees, angle it back towards us. And this does not need to be a stretch stitch. I'm sorry, I should have said that earlier. It's just a straight stitch. Because that stitch is going to come out. It's just a stabilizing. So, Again, just like we did with our neckline, we're gonna go from that center point of that V and we're gonna cut down to, but not through our seam allowance. This is the part that I dislike because now we've gotta make sure to get that V perfect. All right, now we are going to take and fold our neckline, or yeah, our neckband in half. So, right sides together, or sorry, wrong sides together. We're just going to fold it in half. Whew, it has been hot out here. Okay, we're going to fold it in half and then we're going to find the quarter points. So we're gonna take where our V meets and hold that at the bottom and at the exact opposite side on the top, that is gonna be our back quarter point. And then we're gonna match that V up with our back quarter point and get our two side points. So now our neck band is quartered. We just want to quarter our neck line. So again, we're going to take that V and on the opposite side of the V is going to be our back quarter point. And then we're going to match up the V and that back quarter point. And that's going to give us our side quarter points. Now, when I first started sewing, I always assumed the shoulders were the side quarter points and I didn't actually go through this process. And my neck bands, no matter what kind of neck band they were, were always messed up because um, I wasn't stretching them correctly. So it's very, very, very important that you actually take the time to do this little step every single garment because it's going to give you a nice clean neck band every time. All right, now what we need to do is I want to make sure that I'm not doing this differently than what they did. Oh no, don't do that. Basing the raw edges together, which I'm not going to do. That's what I will do. I feel like something's not quite right on this. I feel like I didn't do something correctly, which is driving me nuts, but I did. Okay, I don't know why. Usually I don't have these giant tails. 
And usually, maybe, okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, sorry, I had a moment. Now we're gonna match our neck bands with our um, top. We're gonna put right sides together. So we're gonna put the neck band on the outside of our top, matching up those quarter points. And the same with our V, we're gonna wanna make sure we have the dip of our V lined up with that snip that we made. This just does not feel right at all. Okay, let me see here. It looks right. I just have these weird weird thing in my bobs. And I'm not digging. Okay, now what I'm going to do is a little different than what I do with my regular neck bands. Usually with my neck bands, I like to start in the back because that's where the seam is. And it just, I don't know, that's just how I like to do it. But with this, because it's a V-neck, what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna start at the middle of my V and I'm gonna sew one way around halfway and then I'm gonna come back and hit it from the other side so that it gives me a nice crisp corner because when I'm sewing on the serger, the serger doesn't like to do corners. It likes to do rounds, but corners not so much. So it's easier if you're doing on the serger to start from the front, um, from your V where you need your corner and to split it into two parts. So, all right, cross our fingers. And then what I'm going to do is when I start, I'm just gonna have it nice and straightened out so that it's more of a straight line when I go to it. I just don't like these little flappy things here, so I'm gonna get rid of them. I don't know if I cut my V at too much of an angle when I cut out my pattern, but I don't like it. So. I'm going to match the raw edges up. Three inch seam allowance. So starting in the middle there, just going all the way around. Sorry, not all the way around, about halfway. Okay, so I'm almost to the halfway of the back. thread here and now we're going to go from the other side making sure our raw edges are all nice and lined up I don't think my V is perfectly centered, which is frustrating, but...
that's why I dislike v-necks the most is because you have to get that V like spot on. And mine always tend to be like a quarter inch or so off. Alright, so the first thing I do when I'm doing a v-neck is I want to make sure that where that clip is that I completely got it which I did not you can see here I missed a chunk of it so and that's because I was working from the other side and I didn't have three inch three inch seam allowance so we're gonna go back through and make sure I get that chunk So, I hate v-necks, just full disclosure. Um, I need to take a little bit more out of this because I, when I went back through, I messed it up. It's okay. skinny v-neck. I should have known better to do this on a new pattern and I should have known better to do it with double brush poly but it's okay we got it. All right so here's our v-neck. It goes down a little bit more. It, gets, it tapers to our v. <laughs> oh goodness but that's okay. Now what I'm gonna do because I hate v-necks <laughs> with a passion um, actually, it doesn't look bad, honestly, like, let's see if you can kind of see it here. It's not terrible, right? It just tapers. So now what I'm going to do, though, is we need to hem our garment. And part of hemming that I like to do is um, I like to top stitch the neckband. I think it gives it a cleaner look. And it's going to help my V feel a little bit more pointed. I'm not going to change it. It's going to be like a charcoal gray. It's okay. Everything's fine. So I'm going to start in the back here. And I'm just going to top stitch. You can use a cover stitch machine, um, a twin needle. You can even just use just a single like stretch stitch. It's total preference and what look you like. When I use my cover stitch I only I always just use two needles. So okay and I'm gonna sew around till I get to that V. just kind of clipped my center of that V a little too much so that's why it was a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, just like with my regular sewing machine, I'm just going to pivot it and then sew back all the way around. Well that was fantastic. Usually I feel really confident. Well, no, that's that's not true either. Usually I feel somewhat confident. I just hate V-necks. I hate doing them. And I shouldn't have done it, but we did it. We got it. It's just I wish it was nicer. All right, so we're gonna pull these out here. And all we have left is to hem the sleeves and the bottom of our garment. So let's go ahead and do that. Just 
well. Yeah, once the top stitching's there, you can't. It looks fine. It's fine. I'm just a perfectionist, honestly. Like, I hate when things don't turn out exactly the way I picture them. So. Okay. We're just gonna fold our sleeves um, so that wrong sides are together an inch because this, the seam allowance is, or the hems are an inch. So we're going to fold it in an inch. Just stitch it down. This is the last so long video in this sewing studio. Next time y'all see me, I'll be in a new space. I'm excited. I'll tell you though, house hunting has been a chore. Trying to find the exact perfect space for a huge family is not, not always the easiest, but I think we did it. So I'm excited. Okay, so we got one sleeve down. Just trimming up my loose threads here. And then let's go ahead and do the next sleeve. Again, we're just going to turn it over one inch so that wrong sides are together. when I'm hemming I like to start kind of in a spot that's more conspicuous that way when my seams overlap if they're not perfect it's not so in your face like look at my mismatch lines so like so for the arms I like to start at the bottom where like your armpit is last we just need to fold up the bottom hem one inch and again just hem that wrong sides together one inch and just get as close to the raw edge as you can that's what I prefer to do Again, remember when you're hemming not to pull or stretch your fabric because you don't want to get a wavy hem. And that is one of the surefire ways to get one. So, I honestly, like, I, I paid a lot of money for my sh machines and I let them do all the work. <laughs> as much of it as I can get away with anyways. They still won't cut my fabric for me, which I think is unfair, but... You know. threads. Run over those stitches just a little bit, about two inches or so. 
all our threads out and then to the back and voila just like that in less time than it would take me to fold or not fold because fold would take me like a week um but in less time than to even just wash some laundry we made a t-shirt and it's got a v-neck yay it's 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 my interpretation of a v-neck usually um they're not that bad but it's not bad i don't think it's bad at all i'm excited i love it this fabric totally makes it and it kind of hides <laughs> my tapered v so i appreciate that super much but yeah, I hope it's okay that we did this all in just one video. It was a quick so long, and if I had broken it up, we'd probably have like four, five, five, ten minute videos. <laughs> so I thought, you know, since this one's a nice, quick, easy one, we'll just do it all in one day. And if you want to still split it up, you are more than welcome to. But it's a great, quick, easy pattern, and I kind of wanted to show that, that it's it's not something to be intimidated by. It's a great beginner pattern if you haven't um, sewn much or if you haven't done anything with knits. This is kind of a perfect beginner to try it out. So thank you for joining me. Um, now that this is done, I have to take all of this and pack it up because we're moving in a week. Ah, so yay. <laughs> But thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your um, Love Notions Laundry Day tea as much as I am going to absolutely love mine, even with the v-neck. <laughs> I just don't wear v-necks very often. I think they're great and I wanted to do something different and maybe when I put it on I'll be like, yay, this actually is perfect. But anyways, thank you so much and I will see you next month when, I don't know when we're going to sew up next month yet, but I'm excited to see what it is and to see all of your creations. So please, if you haven't joined our um, Facebook group yet, come on over, join us. We give away prizes. Um, sometimes we have coupon codes. So come on over and hang out with us. Show us your laundry day tea and let us celebrate with you. So thank you so much though, and I will see you next month. Bye.